Hi, I'm Walder from the Game Train, and today we're gonna have a look at how weapon projectiles work, and why hitscan weapons are a lie. Or so I would say, if it didn't turn out that I was wrong. We'll get into the details momentarily, but this will be another, more technical video. In Machines Wired for War, units use a variety of weapons which can be grouped into three distinctive categories. These would be ballistic weapons, energy weapons, and meme weapons. Ballistic weapons include the traditional stuff. Bolters, autocannons, missile launchers, anything that shoots a nice, roundly shaped object meant to ruin the bot's day. Energy weapons are all about plasma and pulse weapons, but also includes the silly, oversized tasers we know as disruptors. Finally, meme weapons are the kind of weapons that either fulfill a very specific and often ridiculous niche, or just outright shit, and are never considered viable. Ballistic weapons are where things get a bit weird when it comes to their projectiles. See, in a PARM data file, our favorite file to mess with, we can find parameters that define the weapon stats of all units, among other things. And for this video, the important stat was speed. It defines the projectile's speed, simple as that. Bolters and autocannons, despite any changes made to their projectile speed, will always hit the target right after shooting. I believe that the speed stat doesn't do anything here because, well, there's no projectile to adjust speed for. No texture exists for this bullet, although the speed for these two is set to 1000 units. No clue why, maybe it's a failsafe? Who knows? Rockets, on the other hand, work as expected. You shoot, a rocket is spawned in front of a gun, the exact position being defined by the launch offset, and then it flies towards the target at a defined speed. These can be dodged, not that the AI ever tries, of course, and in first person mode it's pretty trivial, although rocket launchers usually have lower ranges than plasma weapons. It's also interesting how the rocket's fire trail lights up the environment. I actually wasn't expecting that kind of detail in a game like Machines, it's actually nice. Lastly, Missile Wasp is relatively accurate for a flying unit but mostly unremarkable, which is a feature of wasps, being unremarkable. Energy weapons, surprisingly enough, are all projectile based, even the disruptor. Now, it's not immediately visible in the footage, but if we slow down the projectile speed of the disruptor, we'll notice a strange latency between the zap and the damage being taken. That's because the disruptor's projectile is invisible. In normal play, its speed is calibrated to closely match the range of the disruptor, so that the invisible projectile hits the target the moment the animation is over. Pretty clever. Plasma weapons behave as expected, but have the strange tendency, AI-wise at least, to lose shots? I'm not really sure how to explain it, but sometimes the AI forgets to shoot out the correct amount of projectiles, which makes little sense to me, as this is not something that you can replicate. Besides that, plasma rifles and cannons are a bit absurd. They melt target armor effortlessly and are often faster, longer ranged, or even both, than compared to their ballistic counterparts, leaving them less desirable. Pulse weapons, on the other hand, look and sound nice, but do less damage overall, which is odd, considering that they are a bit more expensive. They also occasionally lose shots, because, of course, not shown in the video at the moment, Judas's homosexual conversion therapy gun is also a projectile, which means that if you're skilled enough, you can have the enemy miss you with that gay shit. 
I can't believe I wrote that. <laughs> Plasma Wasp is a sad robot that also manages to do less overall damage than Napalm, while also boasting impressively bad accuracy. What is this thing powered on? Miracle built? Look, the shitting thing can't even fly to its target on its own. It's a disgrace to the controller. Hey, you ever wonder which human nation sent out the red controller? Hmm. Meme weapons, despite the name, are also projectile based. Napalm Thrower is actually how I got the idea for this video, because I increased its range but forgot to change the speed and found it having strange latency between shots. B-Bomber, the biggest meme unit of all, has a lot of spectacle attached to its B-Bomb, but the true sadness comes from the fact that the shockwaves are visuals only. They do nothing. This depresses the controller. Vortex Singularity is an oddity here, because unlike other weapons, it's a hit scan, but with a slightly delayed hit. On top of that, it only counts as one hit, while the Singularity expands, so any unit that's sufficiently tanky can survive the shot without much trouble. While impressive on the Gorilla, I wonder how it'd look like with a scout. Just for fun, I tried blasting the B-Bomber out of existence with this, but the fucker just dabbed on my singularity with minimal damage. What happened? Now that we know a bit more about how the projectiles work normally, what if we slowed them down a lot? First off, I tried this on a flying unit with the Leviathan turret. It doesn't get enough love in these videos. There's some strange triangular shape that keeps glitching into existence, but uh, other than that, the model is what you'd e expect. The flame effect seems to be flat rectangular objects that jitter around a lot, and are clearly not meant to be seen this way. Despite the target not moving, you can see how the turret intentionally deviated one of the shots. What's the point of that? Half finding is bad enough, no need to make things worse. Next up is the Gorilla Rocket Launcher. The rockets are like oversized runescape darts, and they occasionally forget to have sounds, but are otherwise just fast moving static objects. Nothing fancy here. Bolters and other cannons are, as I've mentioned, unaffected in how they work. If these aren't hit scans, then clearly there's another parameter that needs to change, and what that is exactly, I don't know. Disruptor, as well as Napalm, has a significant latency between animation and projectile hitting, which makes for an odd feeling of disconnect when looking at it. It's like the expected result doesn't happen, you're disappointed, but then it shows up a while later, confusing you. Having no visual feedback for the projectile here makes range adjustments for these two weapons pretty tricky. Now, plasma rifles and cannons are a different thing. When slowed down, you can see that the projectile is nothing more than a clever illusion. It's a flat texture that is rotating while being surrounded by a bright, misty glow. The color of which can be changed, but I haven't figured that out yet. I think there might be multiple projectile textures rotating there, but I'm not quite certain. The glow effect is large and bright enough to hide the imperfections of the early 3D era rather well. After all, nobody likes to see textures and models clipping through one another. Well, okay, sometimes. <laughs> sometimes it's fine. <laughs> It's rather surreal to see the light of death slowly creeping up to you in first-person mode. It's blinding radiance, overwhelming your sensors, but shorter units have a harder time experiencing this due to their eyes being too low, 
as showing that even sentient supercomputer AI hate midgets. Rockets when slowed down produce the harmonious cacophony of a raging ocean. Combined with a brightly glowing propellant, this makes for a beautiful scene of gorillas impending demise, but it also shows that rockets don't just physically collide with the target, they often clip right into it to better simulate the idea of collision. The slow motion also shows here that goliaths are inaccurate shits just like leviathans, making them less useful than not in direct control. Which is just great, since the unit you're likely to lose your goliath to is going to be a reaper. You know, the one that moves faster and can shoot from a good distance away. <laughs> Get your shit together, big boy. The Crusader Missile Conga line is pretty funny though, not gonna lie. Pulse projectiles are similar in nature to that of plasma, though the smaller ones seem to be just flat stretching texture instead of spinning texture. You know, the more I look into pulse stuff, the more bland it gets, which is a real shame because I really like this stuff, it's just inefficient when compared to plasma. I wonder why that's the case. Oh, can't forget the wasps and the bee bomber, <laughs> of course. Slowing down their projectiles reveals nothing interesting about the rocket wasp, but the plasma wasp really has no fucking clue how to aim straight. It's like it's being piloted by a drunk Chesla, the, f the fighter pilot. The projectiles are also interesting looking resembling shimmering flaming triangles, which for some strange reason use the same impact sound effect as rockets? Bee Bomber on the other hand reveals that he is actually made in Italy, as seen by the Bee Bomb spaghetti strands trailing behind the main projectile. Who knew that this game was so culturally enriched? But by the way, did you know that every time a strand of spaghetti is broken in half, an Italian suffers a fatal back injury? Just a fun fact I learned the other day. Now that we saw everyone shoot the gorilla separately, how about everyone shooting at once? I'd recommend this strategy if you want to crash your opponent's PC. The frame rate dips hard from all of these projectiles, but it does make for a great spectacle. Hey, look at those red rings. That's the uh, Judas treachery weapon. Told you it's a projectile. This did show another interesting thing, actually. If the projectile reaches its destination, it'll blow up regardless if the target is, is not there anymore. Or at least it did this time around. Pretty weird, but it's not often you get your unit blown up by the entire military tech tree, so... I guess it's just one of those niche cases that weren't caught in debugging. In case you're wondering, yeah, I did also increase the projectile speed to maximum, which is 1000 units, and it was rather disappointing. Sure, the rockets and the plasma zoom 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 absurdly fast, but it just doesn't have the same effect as a super slow projectile. It isn't mesmerizing, nor is it comedic. It's just really fast, you know? If a bolter and autocannon projectiles existed, this is probably how they'd look in normal play. Well, that about wraps it up for today. Projectiles in machines wide for war are pretty interesting, and I hope this was interesting to you too. I did have to cut out a few things, such as launch offset and trail color uh, parameters, because they are very basic things and not very interesting. With that said, the next time we meet, we're gonna take on the machine's campaign in its entirety. Well, either that, or Brave Fencer Musashi, whichever turns out more enticing. Thank you for watching.